So. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Asle. This is Jan. I'm Jan. Before we start, I just I just realized the exhibition is finished almost upstairs, and we are in this room to talk about it. It's been a year, and it's really great uh, to recognize this moment. So. Yeah. And thank you for the introduction, Ani and Christiane. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we, we wanted to share a bit about the process and also the ideas behind the exhibition because I mean, we tried out quite a few things in thinking about exhibitions as a format as well. So we'll try to share these ideas with you. And uh, from the initiation, the aim was, I guess, as both Anya and Christiane pointed out, was to produce a series of atmospheres uh, where the protocols of the museums are also challenged. And in a way, for example, the principle around the white cube or, uh, or the privilege of the eye, uh, privilege position of the eye of the viewer. And, sorry. Uh, and also how this can be transformed into a more bodily experience where the art perks, the environment and the museum goers who are now called, being called the users are in a way become agents or actors within the same kind of environment or network. Uh, and so we aim at providing triggers and intensities and triggers refer to kind of features that provoke or encourage the users and the works to act upon one another and intensity is referring to in a way zones or assemblages where various kind of compositions can be generated through the way again like different works can come in touch with the physical environment and also the users joining into the game so it's kind of in a way reprioritizing the whole kind of constellation of the exhibition as well, or at least attempting to. So it's in a way a layered kind of formation of users, the display and the artworks. So uh, our first set of proposals was to provide tools rather than a backdrop uh, for the exhibition, for autonomous works. Um, let's say as opposed to the notion of this white cube where the works are presented neutrally, so to say all pointing to uh, modes of actions and reactions and we named this tool set as encounters which might be a bit overused but we value it deeply and by articulations we refer to a set of tools that would um, encourage the users of the museums to comment and express their um, their thoughts or matters of concern and uh, exposures are more like a glimpse into the workings of the institution, a subtle reminder of where you are and unveiling certain elements of function. So we started generating a couple of actions uh, to help us think of a located production of conviality searching for actions and modes of exchange that lay within or outside the immediate protocols of an art museum. But those that might be hosted by such an institution, which one of base and... Um, uh, so we created, we started the study of a uh, catalog, catalog of actions uh, for the Fanabe Museum that aims to list a set of activities uh, which can be performed within the demodernized museum context. This catalog highlights various types of body postures, rituals, and methods of communication. So, as Annie was uh, referring, the spectator or the visitor shifting towards more to the user and these modes of different kind of types of views. So, uh, once we started listing and accumulating these actions, we observed immediately there are certain subsets um, or groups of actions forming. There were clear parallels to our initial proposals, the encounters, um, articulations and uh, exposures, and they could well be incorporated in the design decisions. Collaborating, attending, meeting, associating, connecting, participating, gathering, sharing, 
assembling, trading, exchanging, socializing. Eating, drinking, picnicking, gardening, fishing, cooking. Getting lost, climbing, sleeping, resting, sliding, exercising, walking, contemplating, elevating, talking, waking, jumping. Learning, documenting, fixing, archiving, distributing, inventing, studying, collecting, teaching, publishing. Dancing, performing, mourning, celebrating, storytelling, enjoying, playing. Yelling, announcing, expressing, anticipating, commenting, protesting, thinking, speculating, relating, debating, highlighting, emphasizing, bordering, facing, marking, and occupying. Oops. Uh, so, so this was the kind of catalog we generated, all these actions and how, in a way, to start thinking about how we could incorporate this into the museum. A second study we made was the inventory of architectural typologies, uh, which we aim to create a basis for the coming atmospheres of politicized experience. So we started kind of collecting and translating various architectural features and small-scale building types, uh, with total disregard to their historical and geographic concentration, so really trying to look at different cultures, uh, antiquity as well as Islamic traditions, the Far East, the Southern Hemisphere, all kind of relative names of cultures that the modernist West has appointed to define themselves and their exteriors. And we are aware, well aware that the modern art museum is a very Western uh, modern construct. So uh, we were also aware of the fact that most modernist formalisms uh, has been feeding exp extensively from these forms, especially since the beginning of the 20th century, when this paring down and this kind of whitening started to happen. It was either looking into antiquity or, without giving credit, looking into uh, the Oriental, let's say, Islamic abstraction or Japanese uh, form. So these were really heavily feeding the modernist form, the ideal form of the modern West, whereas not not often given the due credit. Uh, and we believe that forms are political, so we decided to revisit such a basis and also a kind of historical unlearning and kind of maybe creating a new mix from this inventory. Uh, and also it was in a way uh, a kind of looking back into tried out and existing typologies that in a way uh, help us relate that, kind of make that connection between the actions and the forms. So these two studies, along with the guiding toolbox that Asla explained, uh, led us to form the, start forming the settings, namely the sites and moments in which users of the museum share the space with the works of the collection. And especially now in light of the thematic framework of the collection, which was land, home and labor. And from here on it was really, I can kind of freely say a super tight kind of collaboration with the curators, especially Christiane Berndes, a constant exchange of uh, ideas in figuring out how the settings and the works can kind of start working together and coming together. Uh, I'll just briefly go through some of the rooms so that it kind of uh, positions. So the hypostyle or the hypostyle is where a kind of inspired by the forest is a kind of space which uh, where you lose a sense of navigation in a way, uh, but it kind of the exhibition presents itself as a totality of many individual parts. So many works and the structure hopefully become one thing in a way. Uh, and these multiple structure uh, elements, uh, when designing them, of course the typology we looked into was the hypostyle, but we, we also had in mind uh, Lina Bobardi's wooden exhibition design structures, also going further back, Kiesler's New Theater Techniques exhibition, and also uh, Elisitsky, obviously, who was also present in the home section. Uh, so it was also, in a way, negotiating this kind of histories uh, as well. So the columns are connected while spanning kind of uh, surfaces form among one another, and we introduce color as a kind of binding agent which is also maybe not so uh, common, but also becoming a highlighter of the works that are being presented. And the structure is defined or separated by this kind of darker shades, 
which is in discussion was also reminiscent of a idea of a water level or you know something that kind of marks it uh, almost utilitarian looking decision so we paired the watchtower that could relate to ideas of surveying oversight claiming land uh, with a collective tent uh, which is uh, a kind of which was maybe if we could go back which is reminiscent of a kaima or a large bedouin tent uh, as a, almost as a counterpoint which brings you to a lower posture detaches you from the white cube and invites you to slow down sit down and uh, watch the videos that are there and in a in sense of the itinerary it's kind of positioned between land and home so it's also hopefully working in making that connection and in the home area or home uh, section uh, we could say there is a heightened sense of intimacy but it's also not really at ease I think uh, especially because the home is also a kind of can become an oppressive social contract or construct so it's also uh, in a way the pinks and the beiges in that room are not really at ease and the works that you are seeing are sometimes about the uh, the sexual revolution or the black struggle, so these kind of issues that are really actually, uh, in a way, hopefully uh, putting this pleasant environment, so to say, under duress. Uh, and, the, and the setting that plays host to issues concerning labor, it took its cue from kind of environments that are related to control and maintenance of manual labor. Uh, but also a kind of bureaucratic environments and also uh, forms of close inspection. So one such item from the inventory was the anatomical theater, which is a more Western kind of typology. And here, or upstairs, not here, but on the second floor, it translates into a kind of uh, table where you periodically changing paintings, you can really inspect closely with literally like magnifying glasses and so it also both like in terms of your posture as the user of the museum but also how you relate, how you, how you encounter the uh, individual works uh, in a way alternate. Uh, or in, in the case of the civilian defense by Dan Peterman which is already uh, has this kind of promise of use and uh, function. We kind of surround it with other artworks, so it also becomes where you sit and watch a video piece uh, currently by Yael Bartana, or you can, you know, just uh, look around. Uh, in the future, there will be some books coming, so it's also a place where you kind of sit and gather and uh, have a discussion. So, uh, moving into another important aspect of the exhibition design, uh, one has to do with exposing and introducing several different layers of voices in the museum. Uh, there is this conventional information that is given, uh, as formerly known as labels, next to the artworks, and they pretend to be subjective, and sorry, objective, because of the very medium itself. But it never is. It's written by individuals and uh, what is universal anyway. So thinking of this uh, simultaneous commentary within an exhibition, uh, when I say simultaneous commentary, I mean the visitors, the certain groups with certain interests, or the curators or the museum professionals themselves. So we wanted to make an attempt to uh, expose these layers and put them uh, like as opposed to each other to create more meaning. The first, uh, the first voice is the institution. Uh, we do not undermine the institutional voice, but in a way redesign its most common tool, the labels, for the artworks. So in B2, instead of encountering the usual labels next to each artwork, you'll see some books strategically close to cluster of artworks. The label books located in the spaces not only present the basic dry information, such as where the artist is from or where, when the museum acquired the work, but uh, they also locate each work within its immediate surroundings, as well as a wider constellation of artworks. 
They allow the curatorial voice to give extensive information and reflection on the works as opposed to this limited space of, let's say, the uh, orthodox labeling. And they also present the total accumulation of the exhibition altogether, wherever you are in the space. So you can kind of hold the whole exhibition, uh, but you are bookmarked and uh, kind of direct to, to your immediate surroundings. And the second layer of voices in the museum is that of the constituencies. And constituencies, as I mentioned, will be located in the uh, B1. And they are the, the B1 will be this work salon, which is like a working station for these uh, groups that the museum has an enhanced uh, working relation. So when we next meet, hopefully in September, the work salon will be functioning. And this functions, this kind of production will be then injected back into the museum. So one of those injections uh, in the green room, labor room, you'll see, um, is these headlines or slogans that the constituencies uh, create. So uh, these banners um, are the site of expression and direct intervention to the collection exhibition. They are produced and altered by the constituencies themselves in response to what goes in their formation, their relationship to the institution, their desires or struggles. Once in place, these slogans or headlines become part of the total constellation of works, settings, people that compose the exhibition. So this is the second layer on top of the institutional voice. So moving on to the final and the third layer of voice, which is the general uh, users. Uh, they also play a big, uh, hopefully a big part in the way beyond art, the third layer. So uh, you will see, not today, but <laughs> in the near future, these pink acrylic surfaces that pop up once in a while embedded in the environment, the structures. And they're surfaces for the broader audience to immediately pan down a comment, an expression, a mark onto the exhibition. These uh, reflexive remarks will stay until another member of the public comes, erases them, and thinks, okay, this is not the right way to comment on this, I think differently, and just urgently, immediately, pan down his, uh, her own comment. So to sum up, I mean, uh, as, I, as we said in the beginning, we try to kind of position the tools that are commonly used to narrate the collection into becoming a kind of total environment uh, settings that not only host the works, but become kind of a, uh, almost like a ecosystem yeah. of the works, the people, the users, and the environment. Uh, and also towards becoming hopefully sites of action and reaction within the museum. So, uh, I mean, we wrap up here, but I would also like to thank uh, our team, uh, Faisal, who was already mentioned, he's here. Also, Seda Öznal, uh, Ezgi Mutluer, Arda uh, Karaburçak, uh, as well as Ali Bertman, who was engaged in the lighting design. And it's been, as Asl said in the beginning, it's been a really kind of uh, thrilling ride. And we will continue with the work salon where, on the first floor, where the, these kind of workshops and kind of gathering spaces for the constituencies will uh, take place. And also, obviously, maybe you want to thank Yeah, the I mean, uh, of course, the Vanabe Museum, Christiane, Antoine, and the rest of the team, it's such a privilege to work with them. We worked with a lot of people, but this is truly exceptional. So thank you. Thank you.